and I'm really glad you're saying this because, you know, there's, there's just information out there where people are saying, we know that linoleic acid is not ideal from seed oils. So therefore, if your animal has been eating linoleic acid, their fat will have more linoleic acid. So therefore, even if you're eating a like clean carnivore diet, you want to stay away from the chicken skins. You want to stay away mm-hmm. from the grain fed porks because they can actually be the things that are making you insulin resistant. And I don't like, I think there's a technicality in what you just said that may make that slightly true, but I don't think it's the sole cause. And yeah. so that's absolutely right. Yeah. I think that is, I think in general, a person who just says, I'm going to eat more animal product uh, and, and have them replace processed carbohydrates, that's going to be an absolute win um, because you will be eliminating the insulin spiking nature and the seed oils that come with it. So you're eliminating a primary and a secondary cause of insulin resistance. And then the degree to which the differing meats would have differing levels of omega sixes, that to me is so little, it's so much less. The moment you stop eating the crackers and the salad, you know, the, the, the ranch dressing with soybean oil and all that other junk you've, you have done so much. And then any of the minuscule differing amounts of omega sixes. Now, having said that, I think it's irrelevant, but having said that I am an enormous advocate of beef over chicken okay. um, and, and the differing fatty acid profile and the overall amount of fat is, is a part of that, frankly, but it's more a matter of beef is just better than chicken. I think for in, in overall health within the overall composition of nutrients. Those. Um, Lately with this poof, I thought a lot of people are like, well, we shouldn't be eating fish oils and um, salmon because it's high in polyunsaturated fatty acids. Yeah. And as a nutritionist, that is, it's, it's heartbreaking because yeah. I see people that eat carnivore and they're really deficient in their fatty acids from some testing and there's a imbalance mm-hmm. and they're just mm-hmm. eating like grass fed grass finished beef with all the organs, but not taking any of the omega threes. And then they won't supplement because they're saying they're all oxidized. They're really yeah, rancid. Yeah. And it's just, it, it's unfortunate because I think what's an ideal diet on a carnivore diet is sort of eating the rainbow. So all meats should be included to have a mm-hmm. healthy range of the oils. So what are your thoughts with um, eating fatty fish? And then also, do you think all fish oil supplements are rancid and oxidized and that no one should be taking them? That's a great question. So I'll start with the latter one of your la- the latter part of your question with regards to fish oil supplements. Yes. Um, or, first of all, I don't know. That's not, that's not something I'm overly familiar with. Uh, but what I would say is I think as closely as we can, we should eat our omega threes like nature intended. And I think it's pretty fascinating that in nature, when we eat omega-3 rich foods like fish, they're also rich with vitamin E and natural and antioxidants. Yeah. And I think it's, so it's, what's interesting to note is that with polyunsaturated fatty acids, omega-6s and omega-3s, they have, they have, they have I'm, I'm kind of pulling this, I'm making this up in real time. So they have three pathways available to them. One, they can be stored. We can store omega uh, polyunsaturated fats in fat cells or in lipid droplets. So we can store them. Alternatively, we can, they can go down the route of oxidation. In other words, we can burn them for energy. That's what I mean by oxidation. And then lastly, they can go down the route of peroxidation, which is the one that most people are afraid of, and, and rightly so. When we take an omega-6 or omega-3 fat and it goes down the peroxidation, that's when it's potentially problematic. If we burn it for energy, well, that's fine. It's just creating energy. And the fact is, Judy, those, um, those omega-6s and omega-3s are burned at a very, very high rate. In fact, we burn polyunsaturated fats so rapidly that we can, they're the most ketogenic of all the fats because we burn them so quickly that the liver and some, a few other cells, like some in the brain, just start putting it down into the pathway of making ketones because we're burning so much of them. So they have a very high oxidation or energy burning rate. Now, which sort of pathway predominates, I think it's really a matter of antioxidant presence, and that will prevent it from going down the peroxidation pathway to a degree. So I think if someone's, so one, I agree wholeheartedly, people should be absolutely eating fish. Anyone who is interested in that topic should look up the work by a man named Stephen Cunane, C-U-N-N-A-N-E. He wrote a fascinating book called Survival of the Fattest, and he looks at human brain development 
in how humans are remarkable creatures because we have we are we we are the only land-based mammals that are born obese and we basically stay obese even a lean human is practically obese compared to every other mammal we think we look at cows and we think cows are fat they're actually exquisitely lean they just have these big distended bellies because of all their stomachs and all the bacteria in them but nevertheless we're born obese and we're the only animal born with a brain that is larger than the birth canal, much to mommy's dismay, of course. But we have these big hungry brains and all this fat in our bodies that are capable of turning into ketones to fuel this explosive brain growth in this high metabolic rate organ. And he very much, uh, Stephen Cunane very much embraces this idea that the human um, evolutionary uh, diet is one that is sure shore based or ocean shore based that we were eating foods that were rich in omega-3s to support this incredible brain growth and um and rich in iodine to make thyroid hormone to support rapid brain growth because thyroid hormone is very very involved in that insufficient thyroid hormone in a newborn is absolutely catastrophic to development not not to mention insufficient iodine and thyroid in mom who's growing the baby it's catastrophic if the baby's born at all usually would be miscarried but nevertheless all of this is my long-winded way of saying i'm a huge advocate of eating fish i'm i'm even an advocate of focusing on omega-3s but i do think it is in our best interest to try to get it in as raw or natural a form as possible now this is where my ignorance will start to manifest itself i i would imagine there will be something different between two capsules that look the same but one capsule is just pure omega-3. The other one is, say, cod liver oil or something, which is a more, I, I believe the difference would be that there's more in this one, you know, the cod liver oil, than in just the pure omega-3. Additionally, sometimes in the pure omega-3 tablets, tablets or capsules, there are there's soybean oil as a filler in them. And wow. so that's, yeah, I mean, it's in everyone's best interest to turn that label around and, and make sure oh, right. because commonly there can be soybean oil and the omega-3 is actually just a small component of it. So anyway, I think we want to try to get it in as natural way as possible. Um, so if it is capsule form, then maybe go to like the kind of liver oil, cod liver oil version of things where it likely has more natural antioxidants in it, like vitamin E, like it does in nature to help prevent it from going down the path of peroxidation. And I think that makes sense. My only concern with cod liver oil is it's very, very, very high in vitamin A. And that's where, you know, we store a lot of vitamin A and that's my only concern about the cod liver I'm oil. I'm sure you're right. I'm sure you're right. <laughs> and so this truly was, I'm, I'm so deeply ignorant on that topic. So I just want to say, I guess, however we can make sure that it doesn't have soybean oil in it and that it might have some degree of vitamin E in it which is a natural antioxidant that will naturally come with omega-3s. And I don't think it's an accident that they come together. Yeah, no. And I, I firmly believe that when I started looking at not just, so first I looked at, okay, do all these meats have a lot of the um, essential nutrients and vitamins and minerals? And they, a lot of them did. So it's like, oh, wow, meat really has a lot of nutrition. And then as I got more nuanced, when I was working with clients and people weren't feeling fully well on carnivore, I noticed that there's certain foods that have better balances. So Liver is great, uh, beef liver for a lot of nutrition, but for example, the copper to zinc ratio is really, really off. Whereas if you ate oysters and if you ate again, a balance of everything, um, oysters is really, really balanced with the zinc and copper. And since mm -hmm. they kind of mm -hmm. counteract each other works beautifully. And then same thing with fish. So if you really want the fat soluble vitamins, uh, fish has a very beautiful balance of ADE and K. Uh, versus mm -hmm. like some of the beef, for example. Um, and so I think that's where it's really smart to just eat a, you know, people eat grass finished beef or lamb because they say, oh, it's richer in omega threes, or they buy the yeah. egg version of omega threes. Yeah. But it's nowhere near the amount of like one ounce of salmon roe or three ounces or four ounces of just salmon or sardines with their bones intact. Yeah. So that's where, um, you know, I'm in agreement with you. I think just eating a variety is ideal. And it's just well, sad you, Judy, you need to read Stephen Cunane stuff. Okay, I will. I will. keep invoking sardines and salmon and his, his shore based idea of human, the evolution of the human diet is, is going right along with everything you're just saying. Really? Right okay. Yeah. And it's unfortunate because so many people in the carnivore one, it's like, you don't really crave fish when you're eating all meat. 
But secondly, people are scared. Like, well, what about all the mercury? What about all the PFAs in the waters? And, um, you know, I had Dom Agostino on and he said he Mm -hmm. wanted to test that. So for his N equals one, he had like six cans of sardines every single day. And he tested his mercury and it was nowhere near what people thought it would be. And there were people in his uh, school or his community that have way more than him and they don't even eat fish. So I think it's, I think the, you know, the positive fully outweighs the negatives. Um, And I just don't see it. I see a lot of people healing when their omega threes come up and I, people don't advocate for it on a carnivore diet. And it's really unfortunate. Yeah, no, well, well said. I think you clearly have a very informed and eloquent voice in the matter. I think it's brilliant. I'm glad to hear it. (laughs) Thank you. 